I think that the America First agenda is a very passionate um, priority for the people in this district, and I'm very honored to have the support and endorsement of President Trump in this race. And so um, I'm really excited to, to move ahead and, and go ahead and finish this out. Knocking Democrats out of a House race for a special election in Texas, that was GOP candidate Susan Wright, one of two Republicans who took the top two spots in that election, which now heads to a runoff. And meanwhile, voters in a Dallas-Fort Worth suburb also overwhelmingly rejected the woke anti-racist agenda that Democrats have been imposing on, trying to impose on schools uh, in that area. Well, let's bring in Dan Henninger from the Wall Street Journal, my colleague. He's also a Fox contributor. Dan, welcome. Good to be with you, Jerry. So uh, a win, a significant win for, for two Republicans, actually, in that, in that House, uh, initial House race. Susan Wright, the, the widow of the former congressman, who, as she pointed out there in her remarks, won the endorsement, the explicit endorsement of Donald Trump. Does this tell us anything much about the tides, the political tides in the country? It does tell us something, Jerry. I mean, you can't read too much into one election. This was Texas' 6th congressional district. But there's a couple of interesting facts uh, going on down there. One is that uh, some of the suburbs in Texas, uh, congressional districts, had been trending from Republican to Democrat. Some of the long-held Republican seats had been won by Democrats. So Democrats uh, thought they had a chance to pick up some of these suburban districts, as is true around the country. But it looks as though the fact is they're not blue yet. They're still purple. And in that particular district, an interesting aspect of it is that while Donald Trump, about four years ago in 2016, carried it by double digits, he had only carried it by 3% in the last election. So Democrats thought this was one of those suburban districts that they had a shot at getting. And it turned out, in the event, two Republicans won the top seats. They will be in the runoff. No Democrats finished uh, in the top. There will be no Democrats running for that House seat when it comes up again. So it looks like the people of Texas have been doing a little bit of rethinking since uh, the last election about Republicans and Democrats. Right. I think, I think it was a district that, that, that Trump won pretty, pretty narrowly, as you say, in, in, in November. And yet these two, the Republican vote was well over, well over yeah. 50, well over two thirds of the vote, I think. And, just, and, and also, Dan, also in Texas, that very interesting vote uh, in, a, in a Dallas suburb, Dallas Fort Worth suburb, uh, which rejected completely these, um, this, this anti racist agenda that had been put before them. That's also probably a sign, isn't it, of, do you think, of, of, of a kind of a, this sort of silent majority that may be mobilizing against this extreme agenda? Yeah, this was a fascinating outcome in South Lake, Texas, this is south of Dallas. And uh, the school board there had uh, put forward uh, a curriculum that was going to teach uh, basically critical race theory, uh, require students to attend classes on critical race theory, white supremacy, and the rest of it. And the people running for the school board down there and several other seats got shellacked. I mean, they lost like 70 to 30 percent. The Republicans won two school board seats, two city council seats, even the mayor running against this diversity agenda, which uh, had been foisted by the school board, uh, just created a resounding defeat for the Democrats. And, you know, kind of the lesson there, Jerry, is there's a sort of this sense around the country that the elites have all adopted this woke agenda. And that may be true. We've got woke CEOs, we've got woke institutional leaders, woke people running universities and pl places like this school board. But it looks as though the rank and file haven't really completely bought into it yet. And this is a real shot across the bow of this idea. Because that was a big outcome, 70 to 30, uh, voting against the diversity agenda it was in South big, Lake, Texas. It was big, and, Dan, just, just quickly, also on Saturday night, um, you probably, I'm sure you saw, uh, at the Utah uh, Republican State uh, Primary Convention, Dan, uh, Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney, voted twice to impeach President Trump, uh, was uh, roundly booed by, by delegates uh, to, to that meeting and uh, some very unkind things about him. I don't know if we have any. Actually, have the, we've got the video there. We, we, we can play it. Please listen, just listen to some of the, the, crowd, the crowd reaction to Mitt Romney, Dan. Just, we'll just play it. Thank you. Now, it should be said that, uh, that the, uh, the, 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 the state uh, convention did go on to reject a censure motion, very narrowly, a, a, a censure motion 
against Mitt Romney. What does it tell us, Dan, there, and you look at the results in Texas and you look at this, you look at the pressure that's on Liz Cheney again in the House leadership um, because of her position, her taking a strong position against Trump. What does it tell you about the, 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 the various, uh, the tension in the party between the Trump uh, and, if you like, the post-Trump factions? Yeah, it's very interesting. Well, we know for sure Mitt Romney won't be running for that nomination. <laughs> but the tension, I think, Jerry, is between uh, Donald Trump and the voters who were very loyal to Donald Trump personally and Trumpism. It's not exactly the same thing. Trumpism represented a lot of things, whether it had to do with the border, putting America first, cutting taxes, reducing regulation, all the things that Joe Biden is reversing right now. I think all of those policies remain very, very popular inside the Republican Party. And a lot of Republicans understand that Donald Trump himself did promote those things uh, while he was president. The big question is whether Donald Trump himself has a future as a Republican presidential nominee again, or whether he will have to hand off his ideas to another candidate. And again, it won't be Mitt Romney. And it was the one thing we can definitely say it won't be Mitt Murray. Dan Henninger, thanks very much for joining us. Look forward to reading your column this week as ever. All well, right, fair.